Ah, look at the grass. I love the grass. <laughs> What's up, modern setters? Today we're working on our pig pasture. There's one extra step I like to take. We're gonna get the pigs out on pasture, but I also like to have a pen but with a physical fence and gate to lock them in at night so that way at night I can lock them in and I don't have to worry about bears or moose or deer. I'm not worried about them getting the animals. I'm more worried about them running through the fence and knocking it down. And then if we're gone for a long day, a weekend or anything, I can have the pigs locked up in a secure pen. Then I don't have to worry about the pigs getting out when we're not around and getting that phone call, hey, your pigs are loose. And I'm like an hour or two away or I'm working and I'm not getting home for a few more hours. So let's get building the pen. Crazy roosters. I know my cattle panels are 16 feet long, so we're gonna start digging for our fence post for the gate at 16 feet. I hope it's easy digging over here. This is the post I used last year, and one little trick to do is put a piece of wood. It's nice if you have them going both ways. It's easy to do it before it's in the hole, and I'll show you what this wood works as in a minute. There's always got to be at least one. And it's always right when you think you're done. The biggest thing I'm looking for since I used this post last year and I have it set up for my gate and my eyelets are in for my gate to swing on, I want to make sure this height is good with ground level but not too low. I like that. Now we're going to backfill it. When you're backfilling, fill in a little bit, stop and tamper it. What this does, it ends up compacting the soil tighter, lower, so you get a better fit the fence post and it's not going to loosen up as easy. So talking about this board I have right here that I told you I put on, that helps keeping it from swinging. We can move a little bit. But once you get the dirt in there, it's going to be a lot more, there's going to be a lot more resistance on the post. And if you have them going this way, it'll help it like wiggling this way too. Now I want to level and plumb the post. I'm happy with that. We'll continue back filling. Once you have it all backfilled, just make sure, give it a good tamp, make sure you got it all in there good and secure, give it a good wiggle. Now I'm right here perfect with this height. If I was any lower, the gate would hit over here. Now I'm really hoping we don't hit too many roots or rocks because this post I can't move now. You wanna make sure you have a nice sharp pointed shovel. That way you can cut through roots a lot easier. Believe it or not, a sharp shovel is nice. What else works really good when you're digging holes is a good bar. You can get under stuff, loosen them up, and pry it out a lot easier than with a shovel. Like right here, the rock. A good sharp shovel cuts those roots easy. So one good way to figure out how deep your hole is, because your terrain's never level, is take a shovel or a rake, whatever you have, lay it across the hole, 
grab your tape measure. Oh. Grab your tape measure, and then you know to the bottom of the hole, the bottom of the rake, shovel, whatever, is how deep your hole is. Since this is just gonna be temporary fence post, I like to get around two feet deep. Once I get this fence post secured a little bit, I'll bring it to the back side and show you what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for on this post is that we have a good like half inch space and then up top it gets too tight so we're gonna have to just try to keep it like that. We don't want to go too wide of a gap but we want to have it wide enough so we open and close it. We have plenty of room. Perfect timing. I just got done with the gate. Yep. So now we're going to stop putting the fence in. We're going to stop on the pen because i got to use the cattle panels from the pig's pen right now for that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get the electric fence part done on the pasture. If the weather's still good, we'll take apart their pen, get the pigs in here, and get them all situated for the day. Keep our fingers crossed. Now that when we get over here, we gotta figure out what the height of the wire is gonna be and get our insulators in the tree. That comes with the nails? Comes with the nails. That's Can cool. You it? No. And they're good enough? Yeah, that's it. Now we're at the end of the gate. So we're just gonna put it in the bottom one, work it up and around. I'm gonna try to pull that fence tight a little bit. I'm just gonna work it up and around again, down under, and then we'll go back that way. Then this way there's tension here. We don't have to worry about it coming undone. Hopefully we don't run out of wire. <laughs> right. Slug? What? Something. No, it's not a slug, it was something gross. Yeah. Okay. One more after this one. One more. So we're gonna have a gate here. Gonna have a gate here, so I'm gonna 
pull this end tight, wrap it around to keep the tension here. Now I'm going to walk it down to the other end of the gate. You have been dead by now. I know. Now to make our big gate, we got these handles. They got to stretch to them on this end. So we're gonna put that on there. Then we put our wire through, and we just try to pull it tight so that way there's tension on it. I like to leave my ends long so that way if I need to redo it or undo them for some reason, I have extra wire. I can get some tension on them. Now I just want to go around and visually inspect the fence. Like right here, it's too low to the ground. So I gotta go and I gotta adjust all my insulators. So I just wanna come up to it. Here I wanna be knee high, so that can get raised up to knee height. Here, the bottom one is good, but if you follow it, it touches the ground. So we gotta adjust it up a little bit on this one. And down here. The top one's really low, so I'll raise it up to my knee height. This other one I'm looking down here. I wanna make sure it's raised off the ground. I like that height. If I have to, I can put another pole here with some insulators to raise it up in the middle. We'll keep an eye on it. And then I'm just going around and I'm hand picking or taking a knife and cutting the prickers that are too close. So after you get your fence all up and you've gone around and you pulled out all the weeds and you've inspected the height of the fence, you want to go around and look for the contour areas of the land where the fence doesn't meet the ground because the way the ground goes. I'll show you right here. It gets pretty high right here. So if we can put another fence post here, then we can set the fence at the height we need it. So then look, we look down the fence here, it does it again over here. Right here. It is buggy. It's muggy and buggy and and we're just tying orange ribbon to the fence so that way you can see it because when you stand back from a distance you can't see nothing. You can see it right now but if you look over there there is a fence and you can't see it. But if you stand back the flags stick out a little bit more to you. We just have an old IBC tote that we have a hole cut in that we give them for their shelter. We're gonna get this into the pen before we make it. Now I can build the pen around that and I don't got to worry about getting it in afterwards. I used some poultry netting to set it up to make a lane from the old winter chicken coop to the new pig pasture. I guess two post drivers make the only difference. What are those things called?
Whoops, I left my bit up there. So we gotta go down the other end, put some T-post in, and then pull up that back piece of fence and do it again. Man. Nice shirt, Thank Miss Libby's. Let's see it. What are those things called? T-post brackets. They work nice. Okay, I can hold this for a minute. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, you're stuck in that wire. Where are you going? Now I'm just gonna wire the IBC tote slash pig hut right to the fence because otherwise they try to get their nose under it and they root it and they pick it up and move it around. So if it's hooked to the fence, they can't do that. Let's get the piggies' new home ready for them. You want to help, Livy? Uh -huh. Want to just throw that in there? You don't got to spread it out too much. They'll make a nice bed out of it. Okay. It's that time we get to plug the fence in and get the piggies out on pasture. <laughs> Got a fresh battery. I'm scared that when they come out, they're just gonna come out and jump on us. They're not gonna oh, jump on you. Jump on us. It's gonna be a team effort. We ready? Ready. We're gonna need the grain and shake it. I'm not shaking it. Wait, like this? No, you gotta pick the bucket up and shake it. I can't. It's too heavy. We're gonna bring it right out back to the pen. We're not shake. We're not gonna give them any feed out here. Just don't shake it yet. I gotta get this open. I don't think I can. You gonna do this? Yes, I'm doing that. All right. Yeah, and then I'll just walk along and Mom will get the grip. Ready? Ready? Mm -hmm. okay. And they're loose. Come on, girls. Come on. They say, we got grass. We got grass. Come on. Come, babies. <laughs> ah, go get the grass. I love the grass. Come on, Spots. Come on. Come on, this way. No, they want the grass right now.
What? What? What you eating? Kind of neat, ain't it? Uh huh. It's like a water bubbler, but it's even faster. Right, water bubbler on steroids. Water very quickly. Right. And it's not stopping. And it's not stopping until it's all done. Well, it's all done. And it's almost done. That's it. Sauce your own. Well, we got their pigs into their new little pen area inside the pasture. We want them to learn that this is home. So if they have an issue, they're going to run back here. We're going to leave them in this area for like a day or two. We're going to feed them in here. And they got their mother pig or so they think that's their mother pig. They've kind of bonded to the 55 gallon drum. They'll know this is home. And if anything happens, they'll run in here after being out in the pasture. And then at nighttime, it'll be easy to get them back in the pen. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, it's really helping the channel grow. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Love the Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency and freedom. Can I say bye? Bye. Bye.